Do you have a piece of advice that you want to give maybe to women trying to do exactly what you're doing, maybe achieve a goal and, and, and trying to push through? Oh, with. sure. You know, for each case that you're confronted with, ask yourself if there's something under your control that you can do. You know, a teacher who told me that um, little girls shouldn't study science, you know, when I was 13. Oh. And I could have just said, oh, okay, and just withdrawn from the class instead of, you know, what is your problem, dude? <laughs> I love science. Yes. And um, so there are times in your life, so you just need to ask yourself that question. And if there is something you can do, 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 it, do it and get creative. From century words of classic romance novels, one can decipher that there are three main points that complete a true love story. Two lovers, a villain or an obstacle keeping them apart, and a happily ever after. Well, this love story is no different. A 10-year-old girl madly in love with science and the universe beyond Earth. She dreams, reads, and can't see her life without it. From a young age, we are taught boys should love blue and girls should love pink. Boys should love race cars and telescopes, while girls, Barbie dolls. But why do we let society decide who we are meant to love? Would this same society prevent her from getting the happily ever after to her love story? Is it true that all major contributions to science and space are male-dominated? Most people on planet Earth today would be familiar with the names Neil Armstrong, but not Katherine Johnson. Edwin Hubble, but not Nancy Grace Bowman. Behind each celebrated man, there has been a woman. And although NASA has done and continues to do justice to their efforts, our community is yet to learn that women too have made immense contributions and that there is scope for more. So right now on Wikipedia, there's only about, uh, about 17% of biographies are women at all. Um, so what we're doing is collecting information and biographies of women at NASA and in STEM fields to create new pages um, or just update them with more information. Uh, that way we can just help contribute to the presence of inspiring stories that women everywhere can have easy access to and see, yes, you know, my goals are possible and they're there within reach. 15 seconds, guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9, ignition sequence start. July 20th, 1969 Five, marks an important three, day in the history two, of mankind. One, a day commonly two, known, all commonly all spoken all about, all and often all celebrated. All we are meant to not only rejoice the astronauts who walk the surface of the moon, but the 400,000 people in the background who made it possible. The Apollo 11 mission is said to have been made for men by men. Space and design was biased toward the male gender, and only large size spacesuits were made for the mission, which did not fit the relatively smaller bodied women. However, this body structure excuse is slowly becoming extinct as we send more women to explore beyond Earth today. After all, smaller bodies could have been advantages as they require less oxygen, less resources, and assimilate less waste. But unfortunately, no women were sent aboard. Footage from the time show a majority of men in the control rooms. There were women, but barely any in the technical field. It is the same belief that exists today in the minds of people, that women have not been welcome, haven't been seen capable, and still do not belong in the present day. But that's only because our society hasn't learned of the few impeccably strong women, part of the 400,000, that made a difference and can serve as great inspirations.
Joanne Morgan was an exception. Among hundreds of men, she proved instrumental to the Apollo 11 takeoff, despite the discomfort due to how she was treated differently. After her experience, she said, Catherine Johnson was a part of the sinking of the lunar lander and the command and service module. She lived by her father's advice. You're no better than anybody else, but nobody is better than you. On the day of the Apollo 11 launch, Judy Sullivan, a former teacher and a biomedical engineer, was the only woman who helped Neil Armstrong suit up for launch. She also monitored the astronaut's heartbeats, blood pressure, and other health factors while in space. Margaret Hamilton became the lead programmer on the Apollo guidance computer. She led the team that developed the in-flight software for the command and lunar modules and came up with the idea to call her discipline software engineering. Our timeline has come a long way. In 1983, Sally Ride first debunked the myth of hostile working environments in STEM fields and was the first woman to go to space followed by Peggy Whitson, who spent the longest time in space, and Christina Koch and Jessica Meyer, who made a breakthrough in the last year itself for the longest all-woman spacewalk. In 2020, the new NASA headquarters has been named after the first female black engineer, Mary Jackson. And now, we look forward to Mission Artemis and many more to come. Let's change the headlines of the future. Getting the happily ever after for such romance stories has taken time and have been uncommon and challenged. But the myriad advancements recently serve to be inspirations and the starting point for every young girl's love story with science and space. Play with Barbies, but make it your own.